Hello, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Well, uh, in uh, the study, tourism is addressed under three headlines or topics, cruise tourism, maritime tourism, and boating and yachting. Of course, from the point of view of priority area tourism, I look at tourism as a whole, but of course, uh, maritime tourism, and I don't want to follow this differentiation here. Uh, maritime tourism is at the center of, of mm -hmm. our activities and it's a center in the center of tourism cooperation. In fact, uh, tourism is a very, econ a very important economic driver, uh, sometimes neglected, sometimes overseen, because people think, well, tourism, people travel anyway, so we don't have to do much mm. about it. But in fact, well, it's a third, uh, third sector in terms of employment and uh, GDP. And in the Baltic Sea region, we have about 100 uh, million international arrivals. So this is quite a lot. And we have a dynamic growth, uh, especially in Poland, Sweden, and Russia. What is also uh, sometimes forgotten, tourism triggers self-employment and entrepreneurship. It offers a perspective uh, for rural areas. And we also have rural coastal areas. So there is yeah. always the link between uh, maritime and perhaps more land-based uh, tourism. Um, it helps us to capitalize on what we have in nature and culture, um, and at the same time, it has uh, to adapt to quite a lot of um, uh, challenges here. What I want to say is, as we are going to talk, or as we talk about green and blue growth, of course, uh, well, tourism in the Baltic Sea region, in my uh, view and in the view of a lot of other people, only has a future if it is uh, developed sustainably. So here we have the connection, uh, connecting point between blue and uh, green growth. And this is, uh, for tourism, the only uh, perspective in the future. But as tourists don't stop at the national border unless they're not given a visa, uh, we only can exploit the potential that we have in tourism through cooperation. And um, obstacles are, there are quite many, also mentioned by Angela schulz which is uh, the fragmentation because of mostly SME uh, structure. It's a very competitive uh, sector uh, because we have similar things to offer. <clears throat> it's a cross-sectoral uh, sector that uh, is linked to energy, to transport, to innovation and um, to cultural policies. And this is uh, sometimes uh, leads to a situation where it is forgotten. <clears throat> and um, it's really difficult to find tourism uh, in, the, in the funding schemes that uh, are currently discussed. I can only repeat myself. Uh, uh, well, but we have to be inventive and we have to uh, follow the, the logic of Europe 2020 and uh, sail along uh, the line uh, of job creation and, and innovation. So, but at the same time, this multi-sector character um, gives the tourism sector a kind of multiplier character or multiplier function. It, it has effects on a lot of sectors and this should not be forgotten. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it has to adapt to uh, a lot of different trends in technology, in uh, demographic changes, IT and so on. And so it's, it, it has to be very innovative and uh, tourism uh, providers or destinations need to be very innovative in order to stay in the race. So um, from coming back more to, to priority area tourism, um, we want to make this cooperation happen. We want to facilitate this cooperation and make an effective use of available resources because resources are very scarce. So there are two uh, things that I would highlight, uh, highlight here. First, we have to promote transfer and take up of good practice. This is uh, still a challenge even Though we are in the fifth year of the Baltic Sea strategy implementation, it is not self-understood. And this has to do, uh, in my point of view, mostly with the fact that the strategy is not uh, compulsory if we talk about the implementation of programs and projects. So they keep going as they are. And well, that's, that's a challenge. And th th the other point is we have to, of course, bundle resources for new initiatives. Um, this cooperation does not come by itself. In the Baltic Sea region, we don't have a consensus, or let's say we, we are moving towards a consensus, consensus that cooperation and tourism is, is necessary. We are on a good way, but it's a process. It takes time. And um, so uh, this is also self-evident, perhaps. Uh, this 
we have to build cooperation structures that offer an added value. And this is a challenge, because what does it mean to have an added value? I think we are not talking simply about uh, getting uh, funding for projects, but we need to get funding for projects that are able to exist and produce results after the funding period has ended. And so this, the, the question of the involvement of the private sector uh, is, is at the table and uh, is, is key from my point of view. Um, talking about structures, um, we have the Baltic Sea Tourism Forum, which is very important in our field. It has gained acceptance also in the Scandinavian countries, uh, unfortunately. Next year, uh, the Baltic Sea Tourism Forum will take in Karlskrona in the south of Sweden on the 2nd and 3rd of October. And um, this forum has, has proved to become more and more a forum for new project ideas, uh, for active uh, development of, of, of new initiatives. And um, we want to build um, a kind of competence center around this forum, which bundles resources and capacities uh, to make the sector more, um, more to, to, to strengthen it. A second um, body of cooperation or coordination that was recently established is a kind of steering committee, as we call it, for tourism policy in the Baltic Sea region, which comprises the tourism ministries from all around the Baltic Sea uh, region. Uh, in some areas, this is uh, self-understood in the environment, uh, energy, uh, ministers meet, uh, the expert level meet. This is not the case for tourism. So we are here at a at a very basic level, and um, talking about the future. Uh, well, uh, the idea is that we develop structures that are strong enough that they can also live without the Baltic Sea strategy. I think we should, in the end, try to to uh, give the job then to to the sectors themselves to organize themselves. Um, two last point, current activities um, in the framework of the Baltic Sea Tourism Forum that the last one we had at the end of September in Ringsted, um, we talked about, um, about marina, uh, no, boat uh, and um, yachting tourism and also cruise tourism. Um, the idea here is that we um, develop and talk about joint standards uh, for sustainable tourism, well, the sustainable development of, of, of products. We have, uh, I think, uh, if we talk about uh, boating tourism, yachting tourism, uh, there are already some standards available uh, which have uh, to be promoted uh, stronger, of course. In the field of cruise uh, ship tourism, there's one flagship project going on uh, under the leadership of AIDA Cruises, which is uh, about to develop um, sustainability indicators for land excursions. And here we also have the interface uh, maritime tourism, rural tourism, which is, which is very important. Uh, we hope to have uh, the results there next, next spring, and the idea is uh, to promote these standards within the sector, so it, it, that it crosses, uh, um, it, it becomes really a sectoral, a sectoral standards. Um, in the, with regard to the seed money facility, there is one project in application that was developed during the last uh, six, seven months. Uh, this project application focuses on maritime heritage. If you look at coastal areas, a lot of, let's say, heritage uh, issues are there. It's not only nature, it's also cultural. You have lighthouses, you have military fortifications, you have uh, certain geographic you have rocks, whatever you have. So the, it's it's quite uh, a lot. And the, the, the basic idea of this project application is to um, have a higher visibility of maritime heritage and to make it accessible, not only physically, also by uh, IT. And um, the idea is to make these regions more attractive, attractive to create jobs and also to keep people in the region because, uh, of course, coastal Areas are not only metropolitan areas, they also suffer from uh, migration. Um, what else? Perhaps, uh, have I forgotten something? No. Um, links between the strategies. Uh, I would, I think it was you, Angela, who uh, proposed we should uh, designate the relevant priority areas uh, for blue growth. 
and involve them in, in policy development. In the next year, you have a lot of things on the table, uh, developing also, uh, I think, a communication on maritime uh, tourism. It would be good to involve the PAs in this. Um, um, on the other hand, I would like to say, um, we should also see that the strategies are not a purpose in themselves. So it's also a question, what can the strategy um, contribute to the priority areas to make them more effective? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so this is uh, an open question that might be discussed uh, later. And um, regarding funding, I think it would be useful if you look at the different uh, ETC programs uh, to highlight blue growth related thematic objectives. Um, in this context, uh, I think that education and also innovation are kind of um, enablers or facilitators for, to, to promote blue growth. So um, I think education and innovation are, are key in this respect. Thank you very much. Thank you, Wolf. I think that yourself, you asked you a question, and I, I would like to ask you to deepen a little your question. So what could be the strategy that could allow us to be more effective in reaching growth for this sector? And you mentioned also the private sector and the importance to involve the private sector. But I think one issue that to you, it's specific maybe for this results, it's the competition in this sector. So how we can have more cooperation from this sector and less, less competitiveness, less competition? Well, first of all, I would say competition is quite healthy and it's good so because of course. <laughs> I guess you will agree, uh, because it produces good results. It, it makes you makes you better. Uh, um, well, uh, we have to um, Oh, I would like to give you a practical example. We have one project uh, which shows where we could uh, go to, um, um, but at a very, let's say, low profile level. We have uh, the Enjoy South Baltic project in the South Baltic program. And um, in this project, there are partners from Germany, Poland, and Lithuania. And it's their objective to brand their regions, their tourism destinations. And they've chosen three markets, Switzerland, the UK, and Russia. And uh, if, taking the example of Switzerland, uh, Mecklenburg-Vorpommern is already active on the Swiss market, doing tourism marketing. And I think last week there was a tourism fair in, in I don't know, in Zurich, uh, where they uh, have taken their Polish and their Lithuanian partners uh, to this fair. So it's it, in this case, Mecklenburg-Vorpommern was a door opener for their partners and had a joint presentation there uh, at the fair. And from what I hear from them is they were quite uh, satisfied. And I think this is the way to go. Uh, the, the response that they got from two operators from Switzerland was, well, uh, if there was only one partner, perhaps they wouldn't have come. But it was attractive to get this combination. And I think there is a huge potential for this. And let's say there is business uh, that uh, might be done or that could be done if we, if we go there together. And, uh, um, but as you said, we are competitors, and uh, this uh, thinking in competitive terms prevails, of course. But and and therefore it's a process. But this is something we we, hi we have to highlight. And um, I think uh, if we uh, promote and transfer this good practice, uh, it will become more and more evident, and so uh, cooperation will become stronger, and also the involvement of the private sector. Mm -hmm.